It's something most of us can only dream about, being mortgage-free by the age of 30. One Toronto homeowner recently made headlines for doing exactly that. It took him a little more than three years, but he paid off $255,000 in mortgage money. Our financial expert, Patty Lovett-Reed, is here with advice on how to pay off your mortgage quicker. Wow, what a dream come true that would be. If he can do it, can we all do it? Well, you know, I interviewed Sean Cooper about three years ago, and I have to tell you, uh, he is a very savvy financial individual, and he said at the time he was aggressively going to pay off that mortgage. Now, he did things, Bev, that a lot of people might not want to do. His meal of choice was craft dinner. He held down three jobs. He didn't travel at all. He, in the home that we're talking about, he lived in the basement and rented out upstairs. So his main goal was to retire that mortgage as quickly as possible. But there are ways that if you want to have a little more balance in your life, you might be able to do so. Okay, and I'm going to ask you about some examples of, of what we can do. But before I get there, mm -hmm. tell me, you know, the, the old and I guess always current debate between variable and fixed mortgages. You know, it's a, such a personal decision. You could go with a variable and pay less, that's for sure. And I think in this low interest rate environment, a variable rate for a lot of people mm -hmm. makes all kinds of sense. But I can tell you anecdotally, a lot of first-time owners are saying, I'm a little uncomfortable, I'm a little uneasy, I'm not sure what's going to happen, and they are locking in because rates are so low. So my usual consideration is, if you've got a steady job, you've got regular income coming in, you can afford some volatility, you might go variable. If you're someone that maybe works on contract, is not exactly sure how much paycheck they have coming each month, then you might want to lock in. So you look at things on an individual basis. Okay, so Patty, let me ask you about <laughs> some of the things that we can do to chip away at this. Yeah, okay, it wasn't oh so subtle of me because two of our children are new home buyers, so this is sort of selfish. I sent them this blog and said, this is what you need to do. <laughs> awesome. I, you know me, so subtle. They don't listen to me, but they'll read the blog. Uh, First thing, I think you should go with bi-weekly payments. It just makes sense to me. You make two extra payments a year, you don't really feel it, and you just split the payment in half, and it goes towards the principal. I think to the extent that possibly, let's say you have a, a, a mortgage of $457 a month, maybe you round it up to 50. It's just going up a little bit more. You're not going to notice the difference. Uh, when you get found money, whether it's a gift, or it could be a tax refund, or it, it could be whatever. Maybe you get a bonus or a raise put it on the mortgage. It's all about the discipline to pay it down. And when we talk about different kinds of mortgages, I mean, you could, uh, using a mortgage broker maybe, trying to get a, a better deal? I think that makes all kinds of sense. You know, I, I had a chance to talk to Sean Cooper just the other day, and he said a couple of things that really struck out to me. A broker will act on your behalf, he will shop, he or she will shop around to get the best rate they can. But not only that, he said, okay, we're in a low mortgage rate environment. Pretend that rates are 3% higher. Make those payments because if rates start to go higher, you're going to be fine because you know that you can handle it. He said, shorten your amortization. Typically, we go for a 25 year period. He said, knock it back to 20. If you can knock it back even less, it's more money in your pocket. It's all about paying less in interest and not dragging this on forever and ever. So what about mortgage penalties? Well, when you buy, when you go in and you buy your first home, no one thinks, hmm, I'm gonna have to get out of this. And sometimes you do. Sometimes you wanna move. Sometimes life throws you a curveball that you least expect. Always ask the question when you're negotiating your mortgage, are there penalties if I have to break this mortgage? Is this mortgage transferable or portable? Could I take it with me because the rate is so good? You need to ask the question, what if I don't live here forever? And you know, one of the things that you mentioned is rounding up a mortgage, but can that actually make a big difference? You know, it's not about just doing that one thing because you could say, oh, that's so inconsequential, it's not gonna matter. It's when you combined all of these things, when you do bi-weekly payments, you round it up, you put the lump sum on, you negotiate the mortgage to get a lower rate, you understand the penalties, put it all together, and in the blog there are 10 steps, that's how you really accelerate that mortgage and get rid of it, and you have that mortgage burning party all that much sooner. Patty, if it's advice that you're giving to your kids, it's good enough for us. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You can read uh, more tips on Patty's blog. That'll be on our website, canadaam.ctvnews.ca.